Hey everybody, I'm coloring Hellboy today. Oh crap. You can color along with me, download the high res uh, ink drawings from my website, davidgarsher.com. It's all free. Open up in Photoshop or whip out your crayons, whatever you want to do, and then follow along with this video. So here's Hellboy. Here's my ink drawing. We're going to adjust the, the black levels so we get a, a nice uh, dark ink level. Here's the keyboard shortcuts I use the most for Photoshop. You'll see the, the keys I press on the keyboard at the bottom of your screen so you can follow along. First we're going to lay in the flats. So I'm going to pick up one color for the, for the whole thing and then I'm going to start cutting it up into smaller pieces. Uh, I picked uh, a kind of a faded green as it's a good complement to, uh, to the red that Hellboy is going to be. I'm going to separate Hellboy from the background by tracing around his, his outline and filling that in with the dark red or medium red using the lasso tool to select the pieces that I want to color next. Fix up any minor mistakes with uh, holding down, holding down the, the shift key to add selections with the lasso and hold down the option key to remove pieces with the lasso. I'm going to trace out the crown. I also frequently use the, the zoom tool. It's just Z on the keyboard. And you can click and drag a selection to make to zoom into that space, make it as big as possible on the screen. While I'm doing, doing this, I can hold down the space bar to bring up a little hand to move the canvas around so that I can see a, another, another portion. Start out with the big pieces, give the major pieces uh, their own color, and then start cutting them up into smaller pieces. Somebody on a Facebook group pointed out that they've normally only seen Hellboy's uh, flaming crown if his, if his horns are fully grown and, and out, uh, not when his horns are, are cut off and sanded down. Um, I didn't even think of that at the time. Um, I just, I love the, the iconography of the crown and I, I wanted to make sure I included that. Given distinct colors to each of the different items, so his eyes, his, uh, his coat, and the different parts of his coat. Um, you've got the, the buttons on his, um, Epaulets. You got the inside of the flame. Separate color for the inside of the flame. Going to add a different color on the edging, the trim of his coat. Starting to like this coat. Reminds me of the, um, the the one from Blade Runner. I think I want Hellboy's coat. Well, the one in Blade Runner had this huge collar would have been over Hellboy's head probably. So now I'm trying out different background colors. We don't ever have to stick with the first color we choose. We can, uh, once we've got it in there, we can go and pick different things. So I'm going to lay in, try and lay in a pattern to the background, something that's a little bit more interesting than the, the, the flint plain color. So I'm going to put kind of a dark sky, maybe some smoke or clouds um, or both, trying different brushes to get the right effect. Um, I don't have a great collection of brushes. I got to start finding some that are more useful for, for this type of thing. I don't do this type of rendering often. This is more like digital painting. So I started out with shadows and then started adding the highlights coming from the top left, left side, then more detail, mid-tones. Filling in some gaps in the inks. Adding a hard light um, glow, so above the ink layer, improves the, the way the glow looks and it, it affects the, the black of, the, of the, the inks. Trying out different colors for the flame. I originally wanted to go with the orange because that's what's most common. But uh, Mike Mignola also has this blue Vril flame that he uses uh, over characters' heads and, and in different parts of the comics. 
Um, I don't remember ever seeing it with the crown, but I really like the the way it uh, it stands out there. So I I, I went with the the blue vril color. Starting to add the details now and some depth into his eyes. We want you to notice his eyes and looking into his eyes. So we're going to put a lot of detail in there. Different levels of of shadows, different levels of highlight, some reflections. So what I've learned to try and do is is put the most level of detail in the the areas that you want to be a focal point. If, if this is something that you think people are going to be looking at, this is where the, the details should be. Or if this is where you want people to look, that's where the details should be. Um, and other areas should be less detailed. And so sometimes it's tough. you got to pick a focal point. Usually with people, it's, it's faces, eyes, hands. Um, with superheroes, it would be maybe their power. Starting to add the shadows. This part's fun. Starting to become three-dimensional now. A lot of this is trial and error, trying to figure out what looks right, um, what makes sense. Uh, you know, I'm keeping in mind that the my light source is in the top left corner, um, kind of a uh, little bit in front of him. And so would the light be able to hit here? Would the light be able to hit here? And you can also make exceptions. Uh, if, if it's something that um, is not what you think it would look like in real life, but you think it looks cool or in, would improve the, the, the drawing, then I'd, I'd go for that too. Doesn't have to be exact. It's not. No one's expecting this to be a photograph of Hellboy. This video is sped up a lot. The actual coloring took me about a little bit over three hours to do, and so save you guys time. You can get to watch it all in fifteen minutes. I've mostly done pencil drawing and rendering lights and, sh and shadow with pencils. I, I try and think of that when I'm coloring and think, you know, is this where I would put, you know, the darkest? Is this where I'd put a mid-tone? Is this where I would put a highlight? I'm treating each of these pieces of muscle as a, as a cylinder or some other shape. And that helps me think of where is the, the where is the shadow going to be, where is the the base color going to be, where is the highlight going to be. I'm trying to decide how much shadow I want on that side of his body. Um, in, in real life, you would expect very, very little light to hit there because his head's there, it's blocking the light. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of shadow falling on that side. Like this ear, I keep wanting to leave some light in there, um, but it, it looks better and better, I think, the more shadow I add to it. It looks more realistic. Put more shadow in his, his face, kind of a mid mid tone shadow. It's not as dark as the, the darkest shadow. Bit more of a gradient with those shadows. In the color selection for for uh, a shadow color, I tend to pick something that's a little bit. Um, less saturated, a little bit closer to uh, a cool color like blue. Uh, for the highlights, I tend to pick something that's a little more saturated and a little bit closer to a warm color, usually yellow. Adding the highlights. Again, the light source is in the top left, so the highlights are going to be hitting the, the, the top lefts of objects or pieces of his face. You break it down into different basic shapes.
oh, here's a fun part. He's probably been in a battle. He's been in a fight. He needs some, some wounds. He needs some scars. He needs some cuts, some, some dirt, some blood. And this is where I think he started to look a little more real to me. I, I think of, of Adam Savage from Mythbusters and his uh, podcast, Still Untitled, and, um, and Tested.com. And he, he, he goes on and talks about when he's making a, a model uh, for the movies or something, he, it doesn't really start to look real until after he's added dirt to it. You know, rub on a whole bunch of dirt and then rub some off and it looks like it's worn. It gives it this distressing. Um, and so that's what I was thinking about when I was doing this. I'm like, like, let's add the blood. Let's add dirt. Let's. Hellboy is, is not pristine. Hellboy is not... Um, Hellboy's been rolling around in the mud. He's been fighting, getting dirty, and we want to show we want to show that. That's what it make is going to make this less flat. He's been thrown down with monsters. He's going to get messy. He's going to get dirty. He's going to get bloody. He's going to be bruised. Now I'm adding highlights here to his the collar on his coat, but I don't want it to be too much of an a, a attention grabber. So I turned turned the colors down. Um, made them not so distinct from the mid-tones, just, just enough so that you could see it, but not enough so that it's so bright that or high contrast that it would uh, uh, attract your attention. So we got to scuff Hellboy up here. We got to add some dirt. We got to add some blood. We got to add some who knows what. His coat especially. God knows if he ever washes that coat. Make that blood noticeable. It's not enough down there. Get the right color of his skin. I'm going to add some highlights here on the edges of the cuts across his face to make him stand out and a little more three dimensional. More dirt, more blood. Let's see, do we have the right background color? Is there anything better we could do? And that's Hellboy, we're done. Here's the tools that I used to make both the, the original traditional ink drawing and the, the digital colors. There's links on my website um, under the tools section so you can see everything that I've used and um, you, can, uh, you can find them on Amazon for more info. Thanks for making it to the end. If you, if you colored along with me, find me on, on social media. I'd love to see it, post your, your work, tag me in it. Hope you had fun, see you next time.